Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Avocado Insider Series. It's your host Harshit Goda. आज के एपिसोड में I have a special guest. उनका नाम है Dr. Ben Faber and he's from University of California. उनकी PhD है soil fertility में and उन्हें अपनी पढ़ाई की थी 1989 में University of California Davis से. एंड ही इज़ एन एक्सपर्ट इन अवोकाडो एंड सिट्रस एंड उनने बहुत सारे रिसर्च पेपर लिखे हैं जिनने अवोकाडो की कैलिफोर्निया में अवोकाडो की इंडस्ट्री को ग्रोथ में हेल्प किया है आज के एपिसोड में मैं उनसे दो चीज़ें डिस्कस करूँगा पहले कि उनका बैकग्राउंड और कैसे कैलिफोर्निया की इंडस्ट्री मतलब स्टार्ट से अभी तक के कैसे चेंज हुई है एंड दूसरा कि उनने एक पेपर लिखा था जिसमें उनने चिली में अवोकाडो में हाई डेंसिटी प्लांटिंग देखी थी तो उनमें हाई डेंसिटी प्लांटिंग में उनका क्या ओपिनियन है वो बताएंगे तो स्टे ट्यून हाय बेन इट्स हर्षित हर्षित या गुड मॉर्निंग गुड वेल इट्स मिड नाइट है बट गुड मॉर्निंग टू यू टू राइट So, how many avocado growers do you have there? In India, uh, we have like it, the industry is very small right now, and uh, not a lot of people are doing it commercially. I'm among the first one who are actually doing it on commercial rootstocks with imported plants. And uh, I would like to thank you for uh, our previous conversation where you helped me out when I needed information for dieback. Mm-hmm. Uh, we could uh, never welcome. actually figure out what the original cause was because when i sent it to the lab they said there were no fungus issues in the roots like they tested it so mm-hmm. it might have been just shock or uh, like i don't know yeah you know when we plant our uh, commercial root stocks here uh, commercial plantings yeah you know it's totally acceptable to have a 1% loss of trees right you know right. um I and I've seen higher than that but it's and I've seen lower but you know 1% is normal. And right. Okay. The, the the nurseries always incorporate that so they'll replace the trees. You know it could have been something in the nursery but you know more yeah. commonly it's you know the, hmm. the 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 workers are throwing things around you know gosh you know you you never grab a tree by the trunk and yeah. throw it in the yeah. ground. Yeah. But I see that all the time. Yeah, that could be an issue. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, let's begin. Yes. Go for it. Okay. So, first we'll talk about some introduction like uh, what can you give us a background of what your work, what you have been up to, what got you into avocados, right? <laughs> Me personally? Yeah. Oh wow. Well, um I was born in 1951. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you want to start at the very beginning or uh, Yeah, that's fine. Anyway. Okay, so I I um I went to college right. and I went as a history major. Okay. Um I did and so I was there uh and I uh I went to a school that was in the mountains. Mm-hmm. near the ocean and mm-hmm. I got involved in collecting ferns. Okay. And I I really became interested in plants. So right. I graduated with a degree in biology. Right. And then uh, went and taught chemistry and physics mm-hmm. at a high school. Mm-hmm. And when I was finished doing that, I um I got involved with a uh, grower who was doing dwarf apples, high intensity um dwarf apples and that yeah. really got me interested in farming. Yeah. yeah. So I went back to agricultural school. Right. And I got a degree in in irrigation and soil management mm-hmm. and in pomology. Mm-hmm. And uh started working in almonds. Okay. And then this p- position working in avocados and citrus came up. Right. And I I taken that. So I've I've been with the University of California since Oof, 1979 right right, right. Um, so that was uc davis correct yeah okay so i've been working with with avocados and citrus basically since 1989 right uh that's a long time back 
Yeah, yeah. And uh, how has the industry evolved over time? Was it uh, like when you first started out, was Haas all the craze or were you focused on other varieties and then Haas became a dominant one later on? Okay, Haas was uh, patented in 1928 or something like that. Okay. And it, it, and the industry in California, and there, there really were only two places where avocado, well, actually three, but two commercially in Florida and California, and then a really, really, really small industry in, in Hawaii. Okay. Um, and uh, in California, there was about oh, 2,000 hectares grown up until about 1950, mm -hmm. and then started taking off. and. The, uh, the Fuerte was the dominant variety, but okay. there were, you know, Fuerte and Rincon and Bacon and Zutano and Stewart and there are 900 name varieties of avocado. Mm. Mm. And so you'd go into the market and you'd, you'd find at least eight or 10 different varieties at any one time of the year. Right. Um, and then the, the, a large water project was put in mm. uh, that allowed planting in a really ideal spot. So in California, avocados have historically been grown in areas that are kind of cool, hmm. well, very cool. And they're really not the ideal environment for avocados. So suddenly this area was developed that was ideal for avocados and now there is water. And right. it took off one and it took off just at the time that people were looking for um, marketing of the fruit in the rest of the United States. Mm. And so the uh, Fuerte is a thin skinned fruit. Most of the others are kind of thin skinned mm. and Hass became the dominant variety because of, you know, it's marketability and it's good and you can harvest it year round. Mm. Um, well, not, you can harvest it, but it's, it doesn't taste good year round. Mm. You know, in, in our environment, it's ideal in the spring and the summer. Yeah. So suddenly we went from 2,000 hectares to ultimately in 1990, we had uh, close to 50,000 hectares. Okay. So, I mean, it was a considerable increase in the acreage. Yeah. And so that was 1990. Hmm. And uh, we were shipping all over the United States. Yeah. And then Mexico, which is a much, 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 yeah. much larger producer, and it's just the largest exporter in the world yeah. was trying to get it into the market. So uh, the California growers were saying, no, 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 we don't want those darn Mexicans <laughs> going to flood the market with cheap fruit. And, and what has happened is it's just the opposite. Consumption in California, or excuse me, in the United States has increased. It used to be only Californians ate avocados. Okay. Now people in Montana and Wyoming and Minnesota and New York and Colorado and Kansas, everywhere they eat. So yeah, I've seen the numbers. It's just uh, like just during the Super Bowl, the consumption is very high, let alone the entire year. Yeah, yeah. So actually, the Mexican fruit has increased consumption and prices to growers. It used to be uh, prices would fluctuate in the low. 15 25 cents per pound yeah. um and now it's rare that it's less than a dollar okay um, and it, it goes higher than that and it's it's really because people recognize the fruit and they eat it and there's greater demand mm -hmm. right so. right okay uh so i read and uh, a paper that you wrote uh where you mentioned you did some high density planting. Uh, you saw some high density planting in Chile and you visited uh, some orchards in Chile along with some other researchers. Can you tell me more about your opinion on high density planting and how high was it that you witnessed in Chile? Well, the high density planting has been practiced for many, many years and kind of see fluctuations about every 20 years somebody tries, oh, we got a new idea. Yeah. So um, in, in, in Chile, they were using bacon variety, which is an upright columnar, which kind of lends itself to higher densities. Okay. Hasta is a 
more of a uh, umbrella shape. And mm -hmm. so it takes a lot of pruning. Okay. And the thing about uh, in Chile and in much of the rest of the world, they can use a plant growth regulator. Okay. Uh, so you prune and then you spray the plant growth regulator and that limits growth. And right. it can actually increase food set. Well, it's it's a material that cannot be used in the United States. Okay. So you can do a high density with Hass there. Okay. And, and in Australia and so on that you can't use in, in the United States. So right. Hass, you have to prune, 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 and it's very labor intensive and mm -hmm. labor is very expensive and it's hard to get in, in California. Yeah, I can imagine. So, um, What's happened is that people have tried high density with Hass. I've tried high density with Hass. And, yeah. Uh, boy, it's it's it just it doesn't. It it's not economic here. Right. You know, right. It may be economic in any other places. Right. But there's a new variety that we have found is called Gem. G E M. Yes. 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 Which is an upright columnar, the way bacon mm. is. Mm. And it's and the thing about it is it it sets a lot of fruit. It's precocious, yeah, early producing, mm -hmm. and it's incredibly um, productive. It's at least twenty five percent more fruit than than half. So the fruit right. limits its growth. So it's it's columnar. It's high production. Um, so we don't need to prune it as much. And okay. So uh, we we have high density plantings here that are. Oh, uh, on a gem that are oh, maybe eight, ten years old that are on spacings of two meters by three meters. Okay, that's quite close. And very close. Yes. The, the, the standard pass planting is uh, six meters by six meters. Hmm. So right. you, you can really put a lot of trees in it's expensive to do yeah you know it's, it's a very expensive way to um to get started but um you, you're producing a lot of fruit early on mm. and, and so that's that's the key it's high density gives you a lot of fruit early yeah but ultimately you know once an orchard is covered is canopied it's going to mm. be the same producing so okay. if, if high density just means early production all right, all right. Because uh, I watched uh, a video. Uh, you probably know about Maluma. Yeah. yeah. So they are doing trellising in Maluma in South Africa. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, like, have you tried it? Is it practiced in the U.S.? Is it worth it? Like putting all that. We, plants? we don't. We don't have Maluma. Okay. Um, it's it's taken a while to get it in, introduced here and to do trials. Mm. Um, the thing about Maluma, it's got a very, very weak branching system, and it allows itself to be trellised. You know, the avocado generally has a very upright growth habit, mm -hmm. and um, it, it would be hard to trellis. You know, Hass, I, yeah. you couldn't trellis Hass. Mm. You might be able to trellis Gem, because mm. it's got a kind of weak growth habit. The, uh, lamb has and and ha and uh, gem yeah. both will produce fruit that hangs on the interior of the canopy because it's got fairly weak uh, branching hmm. but maluma has even weaker branching All so right. it, it's, it's, it's gonna be interesting the the trellising that's been done in South Africa I think is hmm. only about th three or maybe four years but three years yeah and I, there's a i saw a lot of sunburn on the branches so okay. you know so once you open a canopy up like that yeah uh, they were having to whitewash yeah the branches to avoid the Sun. sunburn right okay i hope our discussion is interesting or useful lagao this video ke liye thank you for watching i'll be uploading more videos frequently on my channel so please subscribe